Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I just have something quick to share with you. Um, thank you for coming today. Um, as you can see by the setup, this is going to be recorded. Um, so if you don't want to be in the video, please try not to go in front of the camera. We might be training purposes in the future. Um, and it is important that we capture everything that is said today in the session. So if you could please be sure to use the microphone, especially so that the people who are online can hear you as well. It'd be very much appreciated. Um, and for the people um, who are attending virtually, you can use the chat function to talk amongst, amongst yourself. But if you do have questions, put it in the Q&A function so that we are able to see it. Um, and we'll try to get to as many questions as time allows. Um, we will be doing questions throughout the session. So um, just raise your hand if you have something to say and wait for us to give you the mic. So. Okay, I'm going to shout out again. I know we just ate so, so talk. Hello, everybody. Okay, I'm, we're going to get there. It's okay. So this is the trauma course. I do know that the name throws it off. If you came here thinking that I was going to give you stats and statistics about trauma, this is the wrong class. What I am really going to be doing is giving you something practical for yourself and also for those that you work with. Um, so welcome to therapy. Thank you. Welcome uh, to therapy. If you were not prepared, it is completely okay. My name is Malara Green. I hail from Virginia. If you are familiar with Virginia Beach, that is how far I am away from home right now. Um, I am a licensed clinical social worker by trade, but honey, I am just a servant at heart, okay? This is going to be a conversation. This is going to be real discussion um, because I want for you to understand how to thrive. How many people became a social worker because you became who you needed growing up? I know I did. Or you saw somebody that was in need, or you experienced someone that didn't have a resource. If that is you... This right here is for you. I will tell you that please feel free to, in, you know, interact with me throughout the time. Ask whatever questions that you want to ask. Um, I'm going to get the whole businessy spill out of the way. Again, my name is Malira. I said I was a servant at heart. I'm also a healer. Um, I've been able to bridge the gap between your mind, body, and your soul. We talk a lot about mind, um, which is the therapy piece, the counseling, and things like that. We talk about the body, your yoga, and all the things that you move and you eat and all that. But what about the soul? And I'm not talking about religion, but I'm talking about the actual soul. So I learned how to do Reiki healing energy to help individuals really heal because I am a certified complex trauma professional. And what I learned was after two years of doing trauma work, that person still had the residual of their trauma inside of them. Um, and the way that I was able to help with that is energetically remove it. Um, I am a family woman. Um, I have two young kiddos that is dying for me to come back home. Uh, my son is four. My daughter is seven. So you'll hear a little bit about them. I am a gut person, so please do not ask me after this, what did I say? Because I won't know what I said. So make sure you have your papers out. I think I'm doing all the preliminary stuff right now. Um, if there's any activity that you do not want to do, please feel free to not do it. Um, this is not a dictatorship. This is us collaborating with each other. Um, there's going to be some things you agree with and some things you don't. It's completely okay. Let's have a discussion and communicate about it. And then I am a liver of life. Um, I promise you, I did not wear this outfit to be the light today. I appreciate every person that um, gave a compliment, but this reflects who I am as a person. Um, who people see today, the reason why I became a trauma professional, because I have trauma. And I say I have trauma because I constantly have triggers that come up. Um, the me, the person that has all this knowledge, I could tell you I got my degrees. My undergrad came from Norfolk State University, so short. My grad came from University of Southern California, so short. I'm currently getting an undergrad certificate in coaching at Virginia Christian College, and then I'm getting my PhD in organizational leadership at Regent University. So I can tell you all the degrees all day. 
but who I'm coming to you as is someone who, when I was three years old, I was exposed to sexual play and didn't understand what that was. So for three to 13, I struggled. 13, I found out I was obese. So then I went through a depression and promiscuity. Then sexual assault when I was 16, I lost two babies. So I have two angel babies. I'm currently going through a separation, which is fairly new. So when I tell you, I'm not just coming to you with a bunch of book stuff. If that's what you came here for, you're not gonna get it. So that's my preliminary stuff, okay? Now, I am gonna ask this question. I would love some feedback. So whoever has the mic, you can pass it around. Um, but what role do you believe one's mental health play in advocating for one's needs in the workplace? What role does your mental health play when advocating for your needs in the workplace? Okay, we have one in the back. Not sure. There we go. The mic is coming back there. Oh, in the very back. <laughs> our own mental health affects our lens, and our, we carry it into a, you know whatever we do. Mm -hmm. That's my perspective. Absolutely. He said that our mental health is what gives us that lens. I tell people our reality has zero to do with what we see, but all to do with what we believe. You don't see through your eyes, you, th you see through your mind. You see through the thoughts that you tell yourself. You see through your values. You see through your prejudices and your biases. Just because we're social workers, it does not turn them off. So we have to understand that when it comes to our mental health, if you have a brain, you have a mental health. I'm a therapist that go to therapy. I'm a life coach that got a life coach. I'm a wellness coach that has a personal trainer that I got up this morning at 3.30 to work out with. But I say that to say, if you are struggling, it is okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay there. So if you came here thinking you was gonna get something just for your clients, no baby, you're here for you. Because the only way that you're gonna go out here and be a really great social worker is if you're real with yourself. So how do we do that? Balance. Now, I'm gonna invite each of you to stand up. I do ask that you spread out because I don't want you hitting anybody and I wanna come back to Wisconsin one day. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through an activity, okay? So make sure you get some room. If you do have shoulder issues, back issues, please feel free to sit out of this. But I want you to bring your hands out in front of you like this. They should be the same length. If they're not, I won't ask just in case your boss is in the room. Um, you can put your right hand up in the air and I'm gonna see how well you can pay attention. We're gonna push forward 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Put your hands on in front of you. The one that you worked on is gonna be longer than the other. And before you sit down, I am going to balance you back out. But very quickly, I want you to look at how unbalanced your arms are if you did it correctly. As a social worker, we deal with our clients' problems. I am going to solve your problem, which then essentially becomes you are the problem. You're who I'm trying to fix. There's something wrong with you. And we don't teach them how to live. So I wanna teach you how to live, do the other side, and again, I don't wanna be sued either. So left hand up, we're gonna do the same thing. Push forward 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, out. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10 in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Put your arms back in front of you. They should be back balanced again. You can take a seat. That's Brain Gym. It's really great for your young children who are pre preschool age and also for your trauma survivors. Um, because a lot of times what ends up happening is trauma really changed the makeup of your brain. And that activity brings both your right and your left hemisphere of your brain back together. And you can do it whenever you know you need to. So that's an activity you can take with you. But also to display, again, we don't want for our clients or ourselves to feel like all we are are people with problems. There is still so much more life for you to live. 90% of all individuals have experienced some form of trauma. 90%. And it's not just big traumas. I call them big T's. It's not just war, a freak accident, a sudden death, sexual abuse and assault, child abuse and neglect. Sometimes trauma is, I was really hungry and the only meal I had was the meal that I had at school. And that was the one thing I didn't like. So when I got home, I didn't have anything else to eat. That's trauma. It could be my parents had to work multiple jobs just to put food on the table, just to pay the bills. So I had to take care of my siblings. That's trauma. It could be running down the step because you're late to work and you bump your toe. Now, every time you go up the step, you're going to look again. That's trauma. But we look at it as this big old grand thing. So what I want to do today is to give you guys an opportunity to see how can we create this harmony so that even if you have experienced some form of trauma, how do we still continue to live? Again, I could have came with a bunch of statistics. I could have told you about the 139 successful suicides that we have every day in the United States alone and some that we cannot count because they were overdoses. I could have easily came and told you guys about how to eliminate the adverse things of trauma. But one thing about it, when you focus on something, that is what's gonna to come to pass. So if we keep focusing on this big old monster of trauma, we're never going to stop it from happening. So this is gonna be the way that we can actually do something different. Again, disclaimer, I do understand everybody has different belief systems. So anything that I am putting up here is not for you to have any specific belief or thought behind any of this. And we're gonna actually take our time. So you'll see things on the screen, but as I said, this is the time to have your pen and paper because please do not ask me because I will not know. The reason why I love this so much is because I believe that we're all like cell phones. How many people have Android chargers in here? Because you got an Android. Okay, I can't use your charger cord if my phone is dying. Same thing, you can't use my iPhone charger if your phone is dying. You have to know what type of phone you are. And some of y'all have upgraded and still using old charger cords. So in this space, I know it hit, right? Yeah, man, that's the, that's the money one right there. But I say that to say, that I want you to walk out of here having a better understanding of who you are holistically. So then you can have tools to actually do something different. So going in line with this phone analogy, and we'll go through this in each of the dimensions as you'll see as I go through this uh, presentation with you guys. But we can only do 80% of this life by ourselves. What happens when your phone gets to 20%? What does it do? It gives you a little message. You can either put energy save mode or cancel. You might as well just put energy save mode because if you push cancel, you need the charger in like 15 minutes. So we're going to learn how to really gather all this together. So you may be saying, Malara, what is the spiritual wellness? Spiritual wellness, again, is not a religious belief. We all are spirit beings. We have a spirit. Whatever you're attached to, this is who you were authentically, form to be before the world told you that you were black, 
white, male, female, homosexual, heterosexual, Christian, atheist. Their, your spirit is who you were before the world told you these are your labels. And sometimes we have to take the time out to figure out who the ham sandwich am I without what everybody told me I am. That's your spirit. And you have to figure out how are you going to feed that. Then that's when you ask yourself, what does that look like? I get asked all the time, I am a Christian therapist, but I see various people. And yesterday, on my way to the airport, I had somebody who had an interview, and it was like, hey, can you just hop on for a second? And I said, yeah. And the question they asked was, with people doing same-sex marriage, how do I still do marriage counseling, right? And I said, why wouldn't I? They're human. What, like, I'm trying to figure out your line of questioning. I get it. I know my belief system. But just because they believe in this don't mean that I'm not who I am because I'm working with them. So I had to learn to tap into my own uh, spiritual connection. I don't know what y'all energy thing is. In Virginia, it's called dominion power. If I do not pay my dominion power bill, I don't care how much power is going through that unit, they will turn my lights off. Some of you right now, have a spiritual conviction notice because you haven't paid your bill. You haven't found what worked for you. You're doing what your parents told you to do. You're doing what society says is right. You're doing what your job tell you you can and cannot do. And you're wondering why you're never charged up. Because that phone is powerful. The charger cord is going to charge it. But you can't get no power without that outlet in the wall. What are you doing to maintain that outlet in the wall? That might look like religious activity. That might look like yoga meditation. It might look like just breathing. Do this one thing with me. I want you to take a deep breath in and let it out. That was literally just someone's last breath. So how you not know that your soul, your spirit is worth you actually investing in? Whatever that looks like for you. And I'm going to say this as well, because I know religiously I'm a part of the majority in the United States. And I'm going to speak to you, and I know this is probably going to be unorthodox, and if the NASW Wisconsin never invite me back, I don't give a flip phone. If you are Christian... Really ask yourself, what would Jesus do when your client is in front of you? I have a client right now that's completely atheist, homosexual, comes with black nails, hair is fleet laid, and he's about to graduate. And do you know he says more Bible verses during our sessions than I do? Because I just created a space for him to just be. I didn't let what I thought dictate anything. So now he's almost done with his trauma work. I didn't let my spiritual wellness to bleed on his. But I had to know what was my spiritual wellness, not what nobody else told me. Because then that goes to the mental, right? Now, I started with spiritual because a lot of times that's where we started. But really, it really starts in the mind. If I don't believe that I am worth being charged back up, I'm never going to charge back up. If I don't believe I have value, if I don't believe I have worth. Listen, I have imposter syndrome up the yin. When we leave from here, I'm going to think of everything I could have said, shouldn't have said, should have did, shouldn't have did, all of those things. But I had to learn to start with my mental chatter with myself. Many of y'all, y'all, y'all biggest bully. Y'all count y'all selves out. Not your employer. They didn't give you that promotion because you ain't believe you deserve it. Not your children. Is what are you telling yourself in your mind? It's connected with the emotion because the emotion is how you experience life. 
I know some miserable, rich people, and I know some happy, homeless people because their story starts in their mind. Right now, people want me to be distraught. My separation is really new. When I say really new, I mean two weeks ago. And their expectation is, Malara, like, why are you happy? I said, it's not that I'm happy. I'm at peace because I know my value, I know my worth, and I know where I'm going. Am I going to have moments where I'm hurting? Yeah, that emotion is going to hurt. Every time somebody talk about marriage, I want to be like, ugh, I don't want, no. But mentally, I am telling myself who I am, not what the world says I am, not the world saying that I'm a failure. You don't know what I've been through these last 10 years. And that got to start up here. This is your strength. This is why mental health is so important. It's not because we want everybody to think about rainbows and unicorns all day. But it's because if I don't know that I'm valuable, if I don't know I have worth, then I'm not going to believe it and I'm not going to achieve the things that I want to achieve. And some of you guys may be walking around with unresolved traumas. And I'm going to actually ask somebody, if y'all can, back there is my bag and my phone is up there. Can someone run me my phone, please? And I'm sorry if it feels like a sermon. I can't change who I am. I'm going to give you what God gave me, so there we go. Um, There's some of you in here that has a hard time with your mental chatter because the person who m messed you up didn't say they're sorry. The person who calls your issues, the person who, thank you, sweetheart, the person um, who made you become a social worker, they have not apologized to you. So you hear everything I'm saying, and you're saying, but Malira, how do I tell myself that I'm beautiful when all I heard growing up is how ugly I am? Malira, how can I tell myself I'm smart when the only thing I kept hearing was I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I will never be nothing? Malira, how can I believe that I'm going to be successful when they say you ain't going to be nothing like besides your daddy and your mama? Or you come from this town, you come from that town. So I'm going to actually apologize for you. Because after today, I don't want to hear that excuse. Because Wayne Dyer says it's this way. He says, it is not the actual snake that kills you, but it's the venom that you left live inside that kills you. Because they go and they live their life. But you're the one that's carrying it. So I want to welcome you to kind of just take a deep breath. And as you take that deep breath, close your eyes. And I want you to hear this from the depths of my soul. Dear survivor, you are more than enough. Just take that in. You are more than enough. Your life experiences do not define who you are, but cultivate your very essence. Suppose you have never received an apology from the person who victimized you, neglected you, walked out on you, said bad things about you, abandoned you. I take this time to send a heartfelt apology on their behalf because you deserve to be free from the entrapment of their egregious actions. I apologize for the years of pain you have endured due to the moment of stolen innocence, due to the moment of stolen time, due to the moment of just stolen <sighs> memories. You will never get back. I apologize for all the decisions and actions you made that were more detrimental to your well-being or that of others due to trying to find normalcy again. I apologize for the years you spent in bondage trying to figure out what you did to attract such experiences. I apologize for the years of self-love you missed out on because the message you kept hearing was that you did not deserve love. Please know you were only a victim in that moment. But as I read this to you, my friend, you are a survivor. And just like survivors, a major illnesses get celebrated when they go into remission. I celebrate you today because you are no longer a victim. You are the best you there is, and you are free. Walk in your freedom.
Take a deep breath and come back into the space. Yes, ma'am. Let me make sure. Say it one more time, what'd you say? Myself, yes, ma'am. So she asked who was the person that said that. Um, I actually wrote that in my book called Free Thyself. Um, again, I have survived sexual abuse, assault, you name it. And the one thing that kept me in mental turmoil is I was like, but they never apologize. They never said, I'm sorry. And I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna tell myself for them, for me to keep moving forward. Now I'm gonna do this as well. We're gonna pivot just for a second. And I want you to get a partner. And those of you who are virtual, I'm gonna give you an assignment as well once people kinda come and move. You can look at the person next to you. But I want you to take the next 30 seconds to just tell them positive affirmations. So you're gonna say you are and whatever you wanna give to them. And those of you who are watching virtually, I want you to put as many affirmations in that chat, so much so that they think that this was the best session ever because there's a billion comments. <laughs> so go ahead, you got your 30 seconds. And I'll tell you when to switch. All right, now there should be a silence in the room. There should be a silence in the room. See, this is what happens when you tell social workers to talk, right? All right, we're going to, I did, not on purpose. No, it was really on purpose. All right, we're gonna switch, so whoever did not talk, it's gonna be your turn. Go ahead. And if you already did it, fine. <laughs> All right. Take a moment. I love my people, I love it, I love it. All right, guys. If you can hear me, clap one time. If you can hear me, clap two times. If you can hear me, twerk them thighs. No, don't do that, I'm just playing. Just playing, just playing, I promise. Who would like to share what that activity kind of felt like or meant to them? How was that? Uncomfortable. Okay. And why was it uncomfortable? Yeah. You want to know why it's hard for us to hear positive things? Because we tell ourselves the negative all day long, like a broken record, over and over and over and over again. And that's why when I get to the social wellness, you'll see why I'm real big on choosing your charger cords, right? All right, I saw a hand over here. And I know we're supposed to use the microphone, so I'm gonna try to be obedient. Um, okay. Okay, it felt good, it was positive. Anybody else? Um, I felt like when I was saying positive things to her, like I got emotional about them. Like there were things, even though I was telling her that I wanted to tell myself to. Mm. Yeah. That's what social workers do. <laughs> we tell our clients all the things we want to hear. <laughs> all of it. We assign them homework and don't do any of it. But 
It's okay. Yes, ma'am. Is I actually liked the activity, um, and I liked it because everything that I told you, I meant it. Mm -hmm. um, it was. And it was things that I wish I told myself enough of. So deep down, I know that those things are there, but I never really tell myself those things. But I can look at somebody else and say, man, I see every single thing. The things that you don't see, this is what I see. And so I like that. So powerful. Um, there is somebody watching. I know somebody else about to share something, um, but I would be remiss if I, I I'm good, y'all. It's okay. But whoever is watching online that feel like you're alone, you're not. Whoever just had a suicidal thought, you shall live and you shall not die. You are valuable. You are enough. You are more than enough. Everything that you need is already in you. And that might resonate with somebody in here too. Does somebody else wanted to share before we continue? Okay. I don't want y'all to start thinking I'm crazy, so I'm going to go to the next one before I start uh, speaking into people's lives today. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Listen, at the end, I got a good two hours. I'm trying to make sure I get through the good part, and then y'all get the real part, okay? <laughs> now, we talked about the spiritual, so that's the outlet and the wall, right? Then we talked about the mental. That's your self-talk up here. Ask yourself, am I my own bully or am I my biggest cheerleader? Because depending on which one you choose will determine the emotions that you have in life. If you find yourself sad, depressed, unhappy, check your thought life. Because it's not when your circumstance change when life gets better. It's when your perception of your circumstance change when life gets better. Now, this physical wellness, you know, people love for me to talk about the size on the scale or what size clothes you wear. I don't care if you got a BBLW, whatever they want to call it now. I'm not judging because I had the gastric sleeve, y'all, so I'm, I'm not judging. Um, but I'm not just talking about that. I call this the meat suit because it reminds me it's going to rot and die one day. It's temporary. So what are you doing with this meat suit? that when the opportunities that you have been desiring to get, you're prepared for it. Some of y'all answers to prayers, vision boards, mantras, universal laws, whatever you do to plan your life is already inside of your environment. But because physically you haven't taken care of yourself, you haven't been able to walk into it. Now, the diet and the exercise and all that, that's a byproduct of that. Because you have to make sure that you upkeep this. Some of you are the worst car owners ever in life. Now, what do I mean by that? You park your car outside your house and you just leave it there. But you go to your neighbor's house and you change their oil, you change their tire, you even rotate their tires and you don't know what you're doing, but you do it because you want to help. And then when the opportunity of the lifetime come knocking on your door, you go to start your car. What happens when you don't start your car? It's not going to start up. You're going to need a jump. So sometimes it's just going outside, starting your car up, and put it in neutral, let it roll, and then back it back on up. The next time we go out there, we actually put it in drive, we drive around the actual way, we bring it back home. Some of y'all are driving the interstate, but looking over at the other person's car, jealous about what they have. You want their kids, you want their spouse, you want their job, you want their money, you want all of these other things. When where you are is where you're supposed to be. That's that physical. Get in your own lane. Stop telling other people what to do. You cannot give to your clients what you are not giving yourself. You just can't. And it really takes for you to make sure this is okay. 
this has to be okay. Like I shared, I had the gastric sleeve. I used to be 319 pounds. That was a big part of my trauma. I thought that I was ugly. I thought that I wasn't lovable. I thought that I would never be able to do anything. And before you judge me, okay, I'm going to tell you this, and y'all going to look at me after this is over. You ever know, like, Tommy Pickles from Rugrats? I'm here, him, in real life, y'all. I'm not even lying to you. So if you think I'm a trip, I'm not. But I stared at the say, physically, I hated myself so much that I never appreciated it. I never took care of it. Food became my parent. I ate it when I wanted to celebrate. I ate it when I was sad. I ate it when I was angry. I ate it when I got a, a, a A. I ate it when I got an F. Like it literally was the parent that I ran to because I didn't have that emotional support. So it broke down my physical. It goes back to if you enter a space and they still had the outline of somebody's body who was dead, the windows back there was shot out. Would y'all want to come in here and listen to me today? But are you giving that off when you walk in the spaces? If y'all came in here and I had a bunch of Walmart plastic bags on the table, y'all be like, what is this? But if y'all came in and I had some gift bags and it was nice and pretty, and I may have just bought y'all little teeny keychains, it doesn't matter. You're going to open it up and get excited. Are you presenting yourself as a trash bag or are you presenting yourself as a gift bag? And I'm not telling you that you got to spend a lot of money on it. I'm a rainbow girl. This right here that you see, this was just a hot commodity. I had to get this one. But uh, normally, I'm a $3 rat girl, okay? If you don't believe me, follow my Facebook. Everything say rainbow shop. <laughs> but you can't tell me that. When I walk into spaces, I shift the atmosphere. Not because I'm cocky. Not because I just have this confidence so what I call confidence and don't steal that I'll trademark it one day but because I know that when I enter a room somebody's life going to be changed and there are some people in here that's going to write well she talked about God this wasn't what I thought she didn't give me statistics this is not trauma this is self-love and you know what I don't care because that physical, for me, when I enter the space, I know I'm saving lives. When I die, suicide is going to die with me. Because I remember being 17, looking in a mirror, almost taking whatever solution I got in that bottle. And my dad knocked down the door three seconds before it got to my mouth. So when I enter a space, that's who I'm entering the space as, as the girl who was saved. So because I got saved, I'm here to do that with y'all. This is what's really important. This is how you thrive beyond trauma. When you take care of that physical body, enough about all this mental health mumbo jumbo. That's great. It starts there. You got to have a positive whatever. But how are you going to execute your life if physically you are broken down? How many people got time that they need to take off? Vacation time to just stacking up. Uh-huh, go ahead and take that vacation. Because if you die, guess what? Your position is going to be posted tomorrow. Matter of fact, it ain't going to be tomorrow. It's going to be posted the hour after your family called and told them that you did. So if you're not taking care of your physical health, how are you going to make it? You're not. That's what's keeping me alive right now, y'all. I just told you, I don't care. I'm transparent. When I become president one day, everybody already knows. So if anybody lies, I already told you. <laughs> but I told y'all, I'm in the middle of a separation. Guess what keeps my mind? The fact that mentally, I know who I am. Spiritually, I am tapped all the way in. And then physically, baby, I work out every day. So when he do look at me a couple months from now, he be bad, Okay. <laughs> But I share that to say, you got to take care of this thing right here. And it's bigger than doing diets. It's bigger than exercising all day long. Sometimes it's just going out and being in the sun. Do you know that the sun is the best actual medicine on this here universe? And if you don't know anything about a pineal gland, now I'm about to take y'all a little bit left, but I'm going to come back. I promise. Sun gaze. Right when the sun goes up and right when it's about to go down. 
it heals your pineal gland, which is where all of who you are starts at. But nobody tells you that. That's easy. You ain't got to pay for that. Use YouTube. Free. Type in, you want to do a 40-minute walk. You don't want to go outside. Okay, I like to go outside, but I don't like bugs. So um, <laughs> I will walk inside. You can't afford to go to a gym. It's okay. But do something to take care of this. Because some of y'all answered prayers is right here in the atmosphere, but you cannot do anything with it because physically you're not ready. Or you're hoarding your pain. Hold your hands out like this and close it for me. If the person that had the blessing that you've been waiting for was to come in here and put it in your hands, how are you going to actually take it? If your hands are closed, you can't. So you got to take care of the physical. So the first four that we had was all you. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. Now we have your social well-being. Remember them charger cords I said? I just want you to ask yourself silently, not out loud, because I ain't trying to get nobody fired today. Who do you have charging you up? Like I said, some of y'all done upgraded, but y'all still trying to use your razor charger from many blue moons ago. You're trying to keep that person in the room and in the space because you ain't ready to let them go. Some of y'all, the latest iPhone that they about to drop for Christmas, I know they coming with something. But you so steady holding on to the flip phone charger that you had when phones first came out. You really got to ask yourself, who do you have charging you up? Because sometimes you're depleted because you're relying on the wrong people the wrong places, the wrong things, the wrong career path and social work. Listen, I'm a social worker to do everything, y'all. I'm a therapist, I'm a life coach, I'm a Reiki master, I'm a professional speaker. I got two businesses, two part-time jobs. Like, <laughs> don't ask me how I do it, okay? It just happens. But socially, I have the right people charging me up. And just like you don't take your primary charger to work, stop acting as if you got one charger for everything. And again, I know this ain't supposed to be spiritual. And hey, they cannot invite me back. But it takes more than Jesus. And I'll leave it at that. You have to know who charges you up in the spaces and places that you're going to. And if the phone analogy ain't working for you, we all are living out our life in a play. What do I mean by that? You got your front row people. Your front row people, they see the sweat. They see you trip. And like I said, I'm probably going to trip. You know, I normally don't wear heels, right? But they see you trip. They, they see you stutter. They see what's really going on in your life. Then you have your middle row people. They are the ones that only see what they're supposed to see. They don't see what got you there, but they see the highlights. Those are your social media. Those are your highlight reels. When life is going well, like when I leave here, I'm going to post a picture like I was here. Hey, y'all. Those are my middle row people. Then I got balcony. Balcony, they can only hear. They can't see. And they can't experience. And then I recently added another one, the parking lot people. Those are the people that can't afford you, boo. And sometimes it's family. They just can't. And it's okay to change people out. I invite you, and I'm going to show this to you in a moment. It's called your personal development plan. And then at the end, you'll have a QR code that you can actually go to and download it for free and um, kind of work through the process. But every quarter, I encourage you to reevaluate your life and the people that you got in your life. Everybody cannot go with you. Even if they've been there your entire life. Even if they're the ones that actually gave birth to you. They can't be there all the time. In certain seasons. In certain places. In certain spaces. And if you find yourself where you don't have people, I will be your person. Take your phone out. And I promise you I'm going to answer it. 
So if you need some people and those who are listening to this virtual, this go for you too. 757 609 0694. Again, 757 609 0694. I will be your charger cord until you figure out what phone you are. If that mean I need to find you a resource, I'm not from here, but I'll find it for you. If you need someone to talk to because you're like, hey, this is my image in the community and I don't want nobody knowing my business, text me, call me, and I'll be there for you. Again, I know this is unorthodox. I see some of the faces. Most of y'all engaged, so I appreciate the 90%. But why do I say that? Because again, you cannot be upset if you walk out of here and not changed. Because socially, you need people. I used to think I can do this thing by myself. I can't. That's exhausting. Being the one to always carry stuff. And all of us in this room are helpers. So you go to work, you get your client stuff, you come home, you get your kid stuff, you get your spouse stuff, you get your family stuff. Everybody thinks you know the answer until you get them the answer and then they don't wanna listen to you. So socially you need something that's going to bring you back to your center. And if you're not a person, one thing that I will, a person that's kind of like an extrovert, I'm, I'm an extrovert, so I can be anywhere. But everybody's not like that. I invite you to write down www. 16personalities.com and it's the Myers-Briggs assessment and that's going to give you who you need in your social your social circle because it walks you through your personal strengths and weaknesses it's going to give you your personality it's going to tell you who you are as a worker who you are as romantically who you are friendship wise and it gives you all of that for free so do not feel like you have to purchase the packet that they're going to offer you at the end because you don't but I do welcome you to take that because you really have to know what type of phone you are some of y'all got an android and y'all walking around with iphone charger cords and you wondering why it's not working because they're not for you and there's some people that need to be in the parking lot that you keep giving free admissions to your life for what what are you trying to prove like, I am literally an in-your-face type of person. So this next phase of my life is going to be hard because I have to learn to move in silence. Because everybody named Mama want to tell you what to do, how to move, how to be no boo, you parking lot. And when I'm ready for you to be front row, I will let you in. I will invite you. And being okay with people talking about you. They're going to talk about you whether you do what they want you to do or not. They're going to talk about you whether you go back to school or don't go back to school. They're going to talk about you whether you have kids, don't have kids, whether you leave him or you stay or leave her, okay? Or whatever you do, they're going to have something to talk about you about. But you have to know who you are. So then cash flow. Cash flow is not a standalone thing, and I'm not going to sit here and promise y'all millions of dollars. You know some people that's like, I have the key to give you money. No, I'm still waiting for mine. Um, but I say that money's like a bird. If you go out and you chase it, you're never going to get it. But if you sit back and you watch it before you know it, you got one bird, you got another bird. And I'm a little crazy. So I'd be like, all right, this is Jerry Springer. She didn't took her man or something like what's going on. But I say that jokingly to say, stop chasing money. Do what you love and the money is going to flow. I've been a business owner now for seven years, but this is my first year being full-time. Y'all want to know how I got to full-time? Because everything that I put in for everybody else fell apart. I had got this really big job as a um, director of a nonprofit program, and the program was already in the red for 12 years. And I said, I can take on the challenge. Midway, I realized, no, they just needed somebody to put it on. And I remember saying to myself, I'm showing up at this job every day with every idea, bringing people to the table, you know, thinking of different stuff. And I said, why am I doing this for somebody when I can do it for me? 
And I remember saying, yes, I am young. I said, before my 29th birthday, I'm going to be a full-time entrepreneur. I did not have any money in my savings. I didn't have any clients. I didn't have any contracts. I didn't have any of that. All I had was a love and a joy to help people. And on April the 8th, my 29th birthday, I walked in as a full-time entrepreneur with the money that I needed to take care of four months of expenses and everything else. Why? Because I wasn't chasing the dollar. I was chasing my purpose. You got to chase purpose. And if you don't know what purpose is, dedicate today to figure out what that is. Think about what you used to dream and do. I laugh all the time now when I take my notes during my therapy sessions because I'm like, I remember being a little girl, five years old, banging on the keyboard. Banging on the keyboard, having little kids. Like I, went, I had like a little adoption agent. Like all my doll babies was being adopted, okay? I don't know why they was getting adopted. I wasn't, but I was like, okay, we're going to do this. But now I'm living out that dream. I remember I used to act like I was a teacher. Now I stand in front of a college class twice a week teaching about grief, loss, and death. When I lost 26 people during COVID, what better person to talk about than somebody who actually got the knowledge and experience? But it's because I know my purpose. How do you thrive after trauma? Knowing your purpose. How do you thrive after trauma? Knowing that everything you need is already inside of you. You just got to walk in it. Because the cash is going to flow from there. Go after your dream. Do it. I got student loans out the wahoo, but I'm going to finish this dream. And I tell people all the time, I'm not ready to die yet because God told me I'm going to speak in front of millions of people, and I ain't did that yet. So every day, that's literally my thing. I, it ain't my time, so I'm going to keep living. Find that thing that's going to keep you to keep going. And it might not be my dream, but it might be yours. And if you are miserable at work, if you need a permission, leave that job. All right, personal development plan. So you guys are going to be able to scan the thing. It's going to give you a whole workbook that walks you through this. But I wanted to give you something tangible that now you know how to build this harmony in your life. How do we do that? And it comes with planning. It, com it literally comes with planning. I, I used to love vision boards. I was a girl that did a vision board every year. And I would look at it and be like, oh, I did accomplish that. But what I realized was I never celebrated the accomplishment. And then I started to feel like I wasn't good enough. So then I created this here where I had to understand, okay, well, what's actually happening right now? That is the actual space where you're real. Did I, like, spiritually, am I tapped in? If I'm not, I need to be real with that. Where did it fall apart? Mentally, am I a bully or am I a cheerleader? Emotionally, do I experience happiness at all? Physically, where am I? Am I where I want to be? Is my health good or am I ducking my doctor? Like, I, I want to be real with that. Socially, what's going on? Do I need more people? Do I need more support? And then cash flow, am I happy where I am? Or do I have a dream that I put off on that I can actually go and seek? So what's happening now? Then from there, what's the plan? In coaching, we call it dreaming out loud. So my plan is I want to own a unicorn farm. I know that unicorns do not exist, but that means I'm going to keep going until I get a unicorn farm. That is a dream out loud. What do I, what do I envision this dimension actually looking like? When all is said and done, what is my big overarching goal? that I wanna see there. And then we're gonna ask this piece here. It says, how will I know I've been successful? So I don't know if you guys ever heard this quote, but they said, you gotta see it before you see it or you never will see it. Meaning you can get what you asked for, but if I never saw myself actually getting there, I'm gonna mess it up. Or I'm not gonna be appreciative and I'm gonna keep putting more and more things on my, my plate. So what people, places, and things are gonna be there when you're successful? How are you gonna feel? when you get what you're actually dreaming to do? How are you gonna think when you get there? Really visualize yourself there. Because life is what you focus on. It really is. 
And then the actions to take, that's in this quarter, what is one or two things that I can do to take one step closer to my ultimate dream? And sometimes it's not doing, it's research. For example, if I know I want to lose weight, but I haven't done it all these years, instead of me going to get Planet Fitness and not having a plan, I'm going to research what gym is I'm actually going to use. Do I need to work out at home? Like, I'm going to research. Sometimes that's just the step for this quarter, those three months. And don't put a bunch of steps because if you see at the end, it's a reward. Everything that you put as a step, you must celebrate. And it don't mean you have to spend money. It just means if I accomplish it and I normally eat my lunch at my desk, today I'm going to actually eat my lunch in the break room. I'm going to eat my lunch in my car. And maybe I want to go to a conference. So I'm going to accomplish this so I can actually go to that conference and not feel any type of way. So whatever task you put, you're going to celebrate it. And then the resources that I can use, those are your charger cords. Who's going to help you get there? Just know whoever you write down. I do encourage that you send this to them because they're going to be your MVPs. Your support system, I love people who love constructive criticism, but I'm here to tell you it does not work because we live in a day and age where people never got validated. So it further reinforces how much we hate ourselves. You want people that I can tell, these are my goals, my dreams, and my aspirations, and when you talk to them, they give you back your words for accountability. So those are your MVPs. Those are the resources that I'm going to need to get this done. And then the date, I normally tell people, give yourself the whole three months. Now, if it's something as simple as I got to make a call, okay, then put that in a week. Before steps to like research and really sit down and figure it out, give yourself three months. Because again, you got to know what type of phone are you? So the next piece of this, we're going to pivot just a little bit. But what I do want you guys to do is kind of just amongst your area. It don't have to be a diet. It can just be in the group. What is one of the dimensions that you know when you walk out of here, you're going to put some work towards? And I just want you to just simply share that with each other. Um, those who are work, uh, virtually, please put inside the chat function which dimension you feel like you need the most work on and, of course, why. So I'll give you guys about a good two minutes, two, three minutes to have that discussion. All right, everybody, come back into the space. Come back into the space. Would anybody like to share what they want to work on? Because I'm going to hold you accountable, OK? If you let me. Don't, don't follow me if you don't want to be held accountable. All right, she's coming with the microphone. Oh, I think he put it on now. OK, try it now. Go ahead. Look, I didn't push the power. Hello? OK, I didn't push the power button. Sorry, y'all. All right. <laughs> so one of the things that I said that I want to work on is the physical. Um, and one of the things that I realized that I know that I have personally struggled with is working on the physical the way that everybody else is to work on the physical. And that is, oh, well, you need to get up and go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym some days. <laughs> mm -hmm. And to say, okay, you don't have to go to the gym, but also realizing, but Danielle, you have done things that addresses the physical, but it feels inadequate because you're not doing it the way that other people say to do it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I like to do yoga in the privacy of my bedroom before my children wake up and come ask me 30,000 mm -hmm. questions. Um, but that's my moment of peace and tranquility and to be able to let go of everything that I've been holding on to. Not to mention, it's funny because I I have the equipment. I, I got a whole, I can have a whole little gym in my bedroom. <laughs> and I have the equipment and little pieces are tucked on the side of the bed, some on the side of the dresser. But I have discouraged myself and said, okay, well, not today, maybe tomorrow. But I think being able to celebrate the wins and saying, man, you showed up today. That was a good 15 minutes. And no, I don't want to lift weights today. But you know what? I got a lot of stairs in this house. So I'm going to walk up and down these stairs. And I'm going to take a break after that. But the little bit adds up to the bigger picture. And being cognizant of saying, you know what? No, you didn't show up 
how others expected you to show up, but you showed up and you got to give yourself grace for that. So absolutely. I love that. And um, one of the books that I wrote is called The Art is Being Me. I says the truth is there's no two people journey the same. No two people journey is the same. You know, even when I'm working with my personal trainer, he does different stuff with different people. You're not going to Euro train me. Like, I don't know if anybody know Terry Crews, but I absolutely love when he blows his little whistle and dance. That's not me. Okay. So he has to do certain things that specifically to me that's now I'm four months in because he found the thing that I love. Do what you love. And yoga, honey, that do make you lose weight. You just got to find the right uh, video to do. That's all. Anybody else would like to share? Watch. Okay. She's coming with the mic. I feel that I have to work on my mental and my emotional wellness. I think since I was really young, I never got the affirmations or anything from any of my parents. I had stepmom, stepdad, dad, mm -hmm. mom all in my life. But I was one of eight kids, and I graduated. I was the only kid that graduated high school. I didn't get information from that. And from there, I went uh, into the military. And if you know anything about the military, when you screw up, that's what gets focused on. Yeah. And I went over to Iraq and Afghanistan twice and still didn't get affirmation from my family or anybody else on doing all that for myself. And then I went to college, and I got my master's degree, and they didn't even show up for my graduation when I graduated with my master's. So I've never had that aff affirmation. Well, we're going to show a few today. I want you to <laughs> give her the microphone, and I want you to come up here, actually. Come here, please, kindly. Sorry, y'all. It's the mama in me. So today we have valedictorian of the NASW Wisconsin chapter coming to graduate from high school, undergrad, master's, celebration of her retirement from being in the military, being everything to everybody. So I want you guys to stand up, not sit down, stand up and celebrate our valedictorian. <laughs> Hello, beautiful women. I want to say when I was talking about what I could take back, I think reflection. I think I love myself a little too much because um, no I went thing. through my whole life. I'm 53 years old, but I went through my whole life taking care of people. I was the oldest. I mean, giving up things, giving up dreams. And seven years ago, I decided that um, it's about me now. But I have to go back and reflect because some my husband tell me, you say no too much now. <laughs> but this is a good thing, but you do need to reflect because you can get very prideful. Yeah. And you get really into yourself to where you lose that caring part of you. So that's what I'm saying. Thank you for sharing that and your vulnerability. Harmony, 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 not balance. Balance is when eventually one's going to get too heavier than the other, and I'm going to drop it. When I find harmony... Like, I'm a real loud person, y'all. I really am. But then my thorn on the side is doubt. Find your thorn on the side. So then the moments where you want to be prideful or boast, that thorn on the side is going to literally bring you down every time. And that's what I had to learn to do. So hopefully that's helpful. I want to say thank y'all because we're about to go into the next half of this. Um, I normally say I apologize for y'all crying, but I really don't care. Um, that's what's going to water what's next. Now, I know when y'all came in, y'all was like, self-love. I signed up for trauma. Why are we talking about self-love? Now, this is what's going to help you. I, I really hope that with learning the six dimensions, it allow for you to reflect on how has your past traumas and personal experiences hindered your ability to move forward. That's what this was all about. 
Let this be a thing that makes you think, make you reflect. Because the key to inclusion, meaning including yourself in the space, including yourself in this world, including yourself in your workplace, including yourself in your family, is self-love. Now, the first piece of this, and yes, we are all adult here, so please do not judge this quote, but I'm going to break down why I said it this way is you must embrace your story. You literally have to get in bed with your story to conceive your purpose. And this is not cute, I'm dating my story. No, this is, again, I know I say some things, but it is what it is. This is one night stand. I don't know you, I just know it's my story. I'm gonna get there, it's painful. I get up in the morning, I don't wanna see you. I need my coffee, get out. That is the, I need to at least address what my past pains are because if I don't it's going to continue to bleed into my today it is not worth being superman if the red cape is your blood because you never took the time to heal you never took the time to actually embrace what got you here I get told all the time, are you ever afraid that you're going to get your license taken away? Are you ever afraid people aren't going to invite you back? And I always say if that happens, it just means I don't need it anymore. Because there's somebody in here, I said something that they needed to hear their entire life, and I'm, I'm okay with not coming back. I'm okay with Virginia saying, give me your license, if it means saving one person. But I had to get in bed with my story to realize what I really bring to the table. My clients don't come see me because all my accolades after my name. Typically, I don't tell them. It's kind of funny. I had one, one little girl. I don't work with kids, y'all. I thought I wanted to, <laughs> no. Um, so I had one kid that I realized that she didn't really need trauma work because that's my specialty is trauma. So I'm not the fuzzy play therapy let's sit down and play games no I had to refer her out but afterwards I did her discharge and her mom looked at her and said now you get to tell all your friend like your friends that your therapist is verified on Instagram and why do I share that because they they didn't know I had another client his significant other all the way in California was like do you not know who your therapist is and you talk to her every week, you don't, you ain't check her out. Why do I say those things? Because none of that dictates my value. It's my story that does. Not the accolades, not the pictures, not the social media highlights, not the people that I see, none of that. It is the little three-year-old that I told you about. It's the 17-year-old that almost took her life. It's the person that deals with suicidal ideation still now on a daily because I have PTSD from the things that I've experienced. That right there is what makes me who I am, not my degrees, not my certifications. They just get me paid. But they don't save the lives. So what part of your story are you ashamed of? That's your real superpower. That is what makes you who you are. Because that's where self-love starts, accepting and embracing the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you can't do that, how is the world going to accept all of you? How are you going to make your client look at their ugly if you haven't even stared in the mirror at yours? You can't. You cannot heal them if you're still walking around ashamed of who you really are. I walk around like one day, like I said, I'm going to be president. What happens when you're president? Everybody want to come out and say everything under the woodworks. They want to look to see if you got a record. They want to look to see you got a side boo jank. They, they just don't care. But I'm going to tell you it all so that you know I've always been who I say I am and being unashamed to do that. That's where I want you guys to be because you're empowered. You are not powerless you have free will to determine where your power goes. Stop acting like you are aimlessly going through life because you're not. You just have to realize that life is all about choices. 
Every yes you give is a no to something else. And y'all saying a bunch of yeses to a bunch of people and saying no to you. You saying yes to your children. You saying yes to your spouse. You saying yes to your job. You saying yes to the pain. You saying yes to everything else besides you. Take that vacation. Take that lunch. Take that mommy break where you lock the kids outside the bathroom. <laughs> even though they still get in there some way. But you're not powerless. And if you've been walking around feeling that way, I'm here to tell you you're not. Because everything you need is already inside of you. I promise you that. Everything that you need is there. So whatever you've experienced, whatever your trauma is, that is not the defining of you. It's really not. I'm not a therapist. I hate giving diagnosis. Everybody got adjustment disorder. You got adjustment. You got adjustment. You got adjustment. As long as the insurance paying for it, baby, you got adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because I never want anyone to ever feel as though, again, they're the problem. Now, do I walk them through trying to figure out what it is? I do. Because it's just like if I have hypertension and cancer and I don't want my doctor to put cancer down there, I can't get cancer treatment because it's not listed. It's the same thing with mental health. So I'm not, de I'm not denouncing the importance of people knowing what their diagnosis is. But what I want to do is allow for you to get so powerful that even with that diagnosis, you realize it's just a Band-Aid on the rest of your body. It's not your definer. It's not your identity. Matter of fact, I was talking to one of the exhibitors out there, and you you know when people try to challenge you? I did real nice, y'all, I promise. And I was like, yeah, I work with individuals with severe mental illnesses. They have schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. I have five of them right now, and they're all virtual telehealth at their house. He said, but don't they have crisis? Don't you send them to the hospital? I said, no, they don't have crisis because I was able to teach them how to really live a practical life in spite of their diagnoses. We actually talk to their voices. If you really want to know about schizophrenia, it's real. Why do I say that? Because they see the stuff that you don't see. You have to give it a name. You gotta, if they're seeing a face, tell them to name that face. Now when my clients see the faces, they friends now. When they hear the voices, the voices got a name. So they can tell, look, I ain't listening to you, Leah, whoever you are. Why do I do that? It's because they're normal people just having an external experience that I just don't get the privilege of seeing and hearing. But now they get to live a regular life with their family. And if they do have a crisis, oh, we have something in place for that. Oh, he ain't like that. He just wanted me to send him to the hospital, but it's okay. But I say that, though, because now they're empowered to be human beings regardless of what their history is, regardless of what their current circumstance is, some of y'all have allowed for your stories to make you a victim when you are actually victorious. But you have to know that you're not powerless. Why? Because you're lovable. Yeah, I know that's real cheesy, but it works with the self-love, right? Stop placing conditions on your love. Stop saying, I'm going to love myself when I become this size. I'm going to love myself when I weigh this much. I'm going to love myself when I find my spouse. I'm going to love myself when my kids stop getting in trouble. I'm going to love myself when I finally can wear them heels again for some hours. I'm going to love myself when I can actually make it through a whole day without having an accident. Yeah, when you get older, it just comes sometimes. You know, like, stop placing these conditions on your love. You are lovable right here, right now, without everything you wish you had. You in here wishing, and you got everything that you're supposed to have. You are worth being loved. And if they can't love you, honey, because they don't love themselves, leave them people alone. They can't give you what they don't have, and you can't give the world what you don't have. So are you giving counterfeit services? Let's be real. Are we out here faking so short? Because it's deeper than the knowledge that we have. You have to know without a shadow of a doubt 
that you deserve everything that you are dreaming of. Everything. This was not my life a year ago. I wasn't traveling speaking. I could vision it. I could dream it. Won't nobody invite in little old me. I'm a 30-year-old girl that is unashamed to be a God lover, that's unashamed to tell my own business because if you hear it on the street, you don't know me. But I do it, though, because I had to get to a point to know that I'm lovable just the way that I am, not perfect. That's why some of y'all out here procrastinating. Because you're afraid it's not going to be perfect, so then you don't do it at all. So if you are a chronic procrastinator, ask yourself, who are you trying to prove something to? They really don't care. The people you're trying to prove a point to, they live in their own best life. They ain't worried about you. So you literally have to get to a point where you know that you deserve to have this level of love. So briefly on your paper, because I see people doing their paper, we're going to do self-affirmations this time. And utilizing your first name, I want you to write an I am statement for each letter of your first name. And it has to be positive. And I'll give an example. Mine is I am Malira. I'm metamorphic. I'm liberated, I'm intelligent, I'm radiating, and I'm ambitious. So take you a moment to give yourself some love. And once you wrote them down, I encourage you to take a picture of it so you can have it in your phone, um, so you can practice whenever you're washing your hands or if you're having a hard moment. Go back to these affirmations to remind you that you are Lovable, because you are. The next piece in the self part is faithful. You must commit to your goals, dreams, and aspirations. Les Brown says it this way. You don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. How many moms I have in here? Dads, I promise you I'm not leaving you out but I can only speak from a mom perspective. So the analogy I love to give is I stay off the beach in Virginia Beach, and anytime I go to the bathroom, I'm going to ask my children, who got to go to the bathroom? Normally, I'm dancing. I'm doing the poly dance already, but I'm giving them five minutes to tell me, do you got to go or not? Before I know it, I'm like, whatever, and I'm going to go to the bathroom. Guess who's calling me? They got to go to the bathroom once I get to the bathroom. Them two little kids. But the only way they're going to get to that destination is if I took the time to leave the footprints in the sand. Some of us have put aside our goals, our dreams, and aspirations for the sake of family, friends, foe, whoever. But how can those that we are living for, especially our children, get to their goals and their dreams if you're not faithful over your own? People ask me all the time, how do I do all the things that I do? And I say, I just live. Like I said, I own two businesses. I work two part-time jobs. I'm a full-time PhD student, a full-time undergrad student for a certificate program. I got two young children. I'm starting another private practice for somebody else. I travel, I speak. I'll be on a flight again next week. How do I do it? Because I'm faithful to the goals and dreams and aspirations that I have, and I rely outside of me. And guess what? While everybody else is saying, Malara, you too busy. Your kids miss you. Spring break. I took a whole week off to be with my children. And it was finals week, too. So I sent my teacher an email. You will not be getting my finals because I'm going to be with my children. The next week, I come back. And I told my kids, I said, you're going to see mommy's computer out. They was like, why? I said, I'm in school. I've been in school for, at that time, a year and a half already. My daughter looked at me and said, mommy, you in school? Why do I share that? Everybody else want to tell you how to live your life, and the people that they're saying you're impacting, you're not. Half of us stop living because of what other people told you you should or should not do. Go back and dream again. Go after that dream. 
I'm going to be on Good Morning America. I'm going to be speaking in front of millions of people. I'm going to share the stage with the people that I quote all the time. Your Les Browns, your uh, Wayne Dyers. Like, I'm going to be one of those people. I know I am. But I can't do that if I don't live. I can't do that if I don't keep showing up. I can't do that if all I become is a mother. Eventually, them kids ain't going to want me. By the time they're 13, they're going to want their friends. And I'm going to be looking lost and busted when I could have built my own life now while still building there for them they do not nope not at all everybody else do that's why my parents in the parking lot um I love them I love them but you have to be faithful to what your goals and your dreams are because if you stop dreaming you stop living a man without a dream is dead. Les Brown also says most people die at age 30, just don't get buried until their 70s. How many zombies do I have right now? And if you are, let this be a wake-up call. Do not leave this room the same. Not because I'm the grand pooba, but because you, you love yourself enough that you refuse to go out being the same way you came in here. Does anybody want to share their dream that they have not pursued, but they know it's time. Will they be what? I see looks. I know there's some dreamers in here, but I'm going to try to not. One dream, and it don't even have to be big. Okay. Because y'all was going to have the awkward Jeopardy music. My dream is to ride my motorcycle across the country. Oh, okay. Come visit Virginia. I'll have somewhere you can stay. I love that. So that's the self part. Now we're going to get into the love, okay? The L is liberated. Once you have embraced your story, you know that you're empowered, you know that you're lovable, and you become faithful over your goals, you now can be liberated to walk in who you are. Walk in your freedom. I'm telling you, and never cease to fail. Somebody's going to leave out of here and have the worst comments about this presentation. They just, it, it, it never cease to fail. It's at least one or two people. And I always just say, you could have left, boo, but it's okay. But I say that to say I am unapologetically Malara Jervet Green everywhere I go. Because I'm liberated to be that. I'm not supposed to be you. I'm not supposed to think like you. I'm not supposed to move like you. I'm not supposed to present like everybody else presented. I'm not supposed to talk like you. I'm not supposed to tell jokes like you. I know sometimes my jokes are corny. But I'm so liberated to be who I am because I don't care if you accept me or not because I accept me. Do I still want validation? Yes. I grew up not hearing words of affirmation. That's why that's my love language. I resonated with your story so much. <laughs> not that my parents didn't want to be there. They just didn't have the capacity to when they didn't have. But when I started to realize that I am a powerhouse, when I started to realize my voice is worth being heard, when I started to realize that I'm a different therapist, I don't therapize, yeah, I don't know if that's a real word, but I don't therapize how everybody else therapizes. But I'm liberated to do that and come into the space, big earrings and all. Sometimes my neck gonna roll and not because I'm black, but because I'm women and I'm passionate, okay? But I'm liberated to be who I am. I want that for you guys. I want you to walk in a space and you literally get the attention of everybody because your light shines so bright that they can't help but look at you. Some of y'all trying to find, like, shine your little flashlights in already lit rooms like this. Y'all trying to occupy rooms that's already occupied. Take your flashlight in your dark space, deal with your stuff, turn your flashlight on, and I promise you there's going to be light. But you won't do that if you're not liberated to walk in your own steps. For example, some of y'all right here don't want to be social workers no more. 
Uh, but we don't want to talk about that one, right? Why do I share that? My best friend, she is now the best virtual assistant. She was right there getting her LCSW, kept taking the test, didn't do well, but now she's fine her footing. That doesn't mean she failed. I have a supervisee right now that's going back to be a teacher. Doesn't mean that she failed. It just means they were liberated enough to live their own life and not worry about what anybody else had to say. I get asked all the time, why is your PhD in psychology or something like that? And I said, because I wanted an organizational leadership. I want to go into these organizations, talk to business people about mental health so they can change it. I can't do that being this clinical psychologist because they're not going to respect it in the sense of the way I want to do it. I want to do the consultation. I don't want to do the service side. I want to help them build the programs for it, for me and how I function. So I pick what worked for me. For some people, they can do the clinical psychology route and do the same thing that I want to do. But I had to choose what worked for me. And I was liberated enough to choose my own path. So do what works for you. My story is not going to be your story. We may do the same exact thing, but the journey to that may look completely different. And that's why I share it with people of what I'm doing, not because I want to encourage anybody to, to do it that way, but this is how it works for me. And you want to be liberated enough to be able to say that. So find your own path. Find your own processes. Because, again, opportunity. Will your opportunity reach preparation? Some of y'all are big bullies of yourself that you don't believe that you're going to get what you desire. So when the opportunity actually comes, you squander it. Or you drop it. Or you're not able to actually enjoy it. Because you already counted yourself out of the number. So it's all about making sure that you have preparation. I'm preparing for what I want. Again, what I want, what I desire, how I visualize it. My way is not going to be somebody else's way. Somebody else can be successful doing it the complete opposite. But I know that when opportunity comes, I was prepared because I knew that I was worth it. I knew that I was valuable enough to get that regardless of my trauma, regardless of my story, regardless of my pain, regardless of my current circumstances. I prepared so when the opportunity came, my hands was open to receive it. Sometimes you got to remove the clutter. I like to tell people opportunities are like buffets. When you go to the buffet, you see a bunch of stuff that you like, but you don't put everything on your plate all at one time. You want to leave room for the thing that's going to pop up for you. And really being able to get to that space where you allow for yourself again to have that dream, but prepare for it to come into existence. Take that CEU course. Take that vacation for self-care. Do what it is that you need to do so then the thing that you've been working so hard on, you're actually ready for it. Because if not, what ends up happening is you need to become ventilated. In order to be ventilated, you must flatline. So some of y'all right now is that flatline phase where you're burnt out, you're tired, you're overwhelmed, you don't want to do this anymore. But I'm here to tell you, let this be ventilation to your life. Let what needs to die, die, so then what needs to live can start to live in you. So those dark moments that you're afraid of, they have purpose too. My darkest moments birthed who I am today. It wasn't the fluffy stuff. It wasn't the graduations. It wasn't the certifications. It was the dark moments where I wanted to throw in the towel that I became ventilated. I love butterflies, and there's this analogy of butterflies that we always talk about caterpillars, and then we talk about the butterfly, but we don't talk about the cocoon. During that cocoon phase, the, butter, the actual caterpillar liquefies besides its eyes. It gets so close to death in order to literally birth the most beautiful thing ever. 
But what ends up happening is if we open up the cocoon too early, that butterfly will not fly. What do I mean by that? There was this runner. He would run every morning, and one day he saw Mr. Butterfly struggling to get out of his cocoon. He looked at Mr. Butterfly. He said, hey, I'm going to give you a day. If you're still struggling tomorrow, I'm going to come back. I'm going to help you out. He came back the next day. Mr. Butterfly is still struggling. So he had his scissors in his pocket, and he was ready. He cut open the cocoon. Mr. Butterfly kind of fell down to the ground, but he was still alive. And the, and the guy said, I'm going to see you flying tomorrow, Mr. Butterfly. He came back the next day. Mr. Butterfly was still on the ground. And the runner said, hey, why didn't you fly yet? He said, I needed the pressure for my wings that was in that cocoon, but you opened it too fast. Some of y'all right now is in that space of your cocoon where you feel pressure coming from every side. That work ain't going well, family not going well, personal things is happening one thing at a time. But I'm here to tell you that that pressure is what's going to allow you to fly the rest of your life if you let it. And sometimes you need somebody who's going to watch over your cocoons, your cocoon period to remind you it ain't over yet. It's not over yet. You got this. It's not over yet. Because then one day you're going to break out of that cocoon and fly for the rest of your life. Because that gives you an opportunity to evolve. Once the old is gone, do something different. Don't let the old be gone and you bring it right back. Let it go. That's the part of the love. I love me enough to not keep bringing this back into my space. I love me enough to not keep letting them ring my, my phone. I love me enough to not keep trying to prove something to the supervisor. I love me enough that if I want to make a career switch, I can make a career switch. I love me enough that whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it because I can evolve. There's this quote that says, I make plans, but I remain flexible to the surprises that life has in store for me. I say yes as often as possible. You can make plans all day. You can do that personal development plan all day. But sometimes life surprises you. Because the more that you evolve, the more you go through the evolution, the more prepared you are for what you actually really want to do in life. And that's what all of this is about. So why do a presentation like this? We talk about trauma all the time. We do. We have every curriculum under the sun, every modality, DBT, CBT, CPT, TFCBT. We have so many <laughs> acronyms and programs and um the family system stuff, like we have so much stuff. But are we really allowing for people to see that they are lovable enough to even complete that treatment? Sometimes it's getting your clients to see that they're even worthy enough for change before you can really make a change. Sometimes you have to see that you're worthy enough for change to even think that you can make a change in your clients. So I welcome you to close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to take what I call reset breaths. You're going to do four of them. You're going to breathe in for four. Hold it at the top for four. And breathe out for four. The next time you breathe in, I want you to breathe in joy. When you hold it, I want you to feel that joy permeating your body. And I want you to breathe out depression, sadness, suicidal thoughts. When you breathe in the next time, I want you to breathe in peace. Hold peace in your body so that you can have peace that surpasses all understanding. And when you breathe out, I want you to breathe out turmoil, doubt, confusion. Your last breath in, breathe in whatever you feel like you need right now. Hold it at the top, and when you're ready, you can let it out. And I want you to stay in this moment, eyes still closed. And I 
want you to visualize a bright light. And in this bright light, you start to see a park bench. And the head of a young child. As you walk closer to this bench, you realize that it's you. The you that used to dream. The you that used to laugh. The you that didn't have any care in the world. And you notice him or her crying because their dream has not been lived out yet. You reach out to you. Let yourself know that you'll take over from here because this will be the first day to the rest of your life. And you let yourself know that we'll start dreaming again that we are okay, that we are no longer in bondage. And I want you to give yourself a hug, like an actual hug. And let them know that they are going to be okay. Because a more healed version of you is showing up today. Take you one last reset breath and come back into the space. Again, inclusion starts with knowing that you are enough. We cannot treat trauma by ourselves. We've talked about that already with our keynotes. We need a support system. We need people around us that's gonna remind us of what we say we're gonna do in our lives. We need people who's gonna remind us of everything that we have promised ourselves that we were gonna do. Because if you didn't get anything else from this, let me ask you this question. Was this what you was expecting? And you can be honest. If you wasn't expecting this, raise your hand. Okay, I'm glad. Because when you least expect it is when your healing really happens. Any questions, guys? We have some time for Q&A. OK. Ooh, there we go. OK. Just wanted to recognize our friends online um, with some comments. Um, I need to have self-awareness and the ability to be mindful at all times as much as possible. Love is our source. We come from love and we are love. I create my experience by how I choose to respond to my world. Mm -hmm. And then a question is, um, is there a way to use an email or www to get the personal development plan? Yes, so I'm going to actually, I can put that on the screen now, um, but if you go to www.malaratransforms.com, they'll see a label at the top that says your personal development plan, and that's what they can download that at. So once you subscribe, it's going to ask you for your email, and then it'll send it to your email. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you to the online people. We appreciate you. Questions, comments? OK. All right, we have one over here. She's coming. And it's y'all time to ask, OK? Don't be shy. <laughs> I don't like microphones. Um, 
So uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for this. I think it was a really um, very inspiring and eye-opening presentation. And I just want to know how much it would cost to hire you to just walk behind me and continuously tell me these things because I know I feel really good right now, but I'm going to leave here. And, you know, it's just life. And sometimes it just becomes very eroding to who we are. Um, And so the one other thing that when you were talking about building up those social networks, um, that really hit home for me and... I think that as we get older and we start to lose people in our lives, especially um, like losing, you know, like my mother um, yeah. recently, and she was my number one, um, you know, she was my cheerleader. Yeah. Everything I did, it was like, yay, you know, <laughs> and now I don't have that person to call anymore and having to find new people because I'm kind of a, um, I came here about seven years ago, uh-huh. and so I haven't really built a very good close network all my people are all over the country. Um, but I want to thank you for posing the question to me of what I really want to do. What do I, where do I want to, where do I want to be? Yeah. You know, cause soon my kids are all going to be gone and then I'll just, just mean a big house and some dogs, you know? <laughs> well, number one, you're very welcome. Number two, if you text me, I promise you, I am a texter. So if you say, hey, I met you at the NASW conference and I just need some affirmations, I do get up early in the morning, so I'm trying to not send messages as early as I get up, um, but I will send you affirmations if you tell me. I'm the type of person, tell me what you need from me and I will give it to you. Um, also, the personal development plan is a foundationary piece for my coaching program. It's called the Metamorphosis Experience. Um, and that is also on my website. And if you use the code Grove, G-R-O-V-E, you will get 40% off of that. And that's an eight-week module that goes even more in depth with what we went today. This is like that introductory. Um, so if you want it to still work with me, that would be a way as well. But what I will tell you is because you acknowledged it today, you're going to see a change. Change doesn't happen if we don't acknowledge it. So you even acknowledging that you're not exactly where you want to be, you're going to find the solution to that. And I'll be here to help you. <laughs> with with the, the, the analogy of the butterfly and the caterpillar, um, I was in Costa Rica with an entomologist who did studies with all of that. And he actually told me, he said, it, it is that they liquefy, he said, but it is so complex as as if we as humans covered ourselves in blankets, liquefied, and Mm -hmm. came out as an elephant. So the transformation is that, you know, extreme. That's powerful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And you guys network, there's no reason why you leave this room and don't have at least one person that can hold you down. So I encourage you guys to connect with her, be her support. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, I just wanted to also thank you for the presentation. It, I don't know, it really like convicted me. I wasn't expecting to get a therapy session today at all. <laughs> and um, I like how you laid out the steps um, because I feel like they're all kind of interconnected. Like if we work on we could work on our one goal that we're taking out today, but it might be like the emotional wellness part or the mindset part that may be the thing that the barrier that's keeping us from being more social or, you know, like our sister shared, just doing the physical, it might be those self affirmations. So I just wanted to applaud you just like how you laid it all out and how it I just know how it made me kind of think and respond and do like a inventory yeah and so yeah good job thank you for that thank you um really and what I tell people is human beings are second people what do I mean by that we live per second when we put pressure to live beyond that second that's when we fail so every second I may have a focus on one thing And then the next second, something else becomes an emergency, and I'm going to give myself credit or grace to deal with that next thing. And then those seconds, they are going to create that minute, and then that minute creates that hour. But if you do second by second, when life begins to change and you have to pivot, you'll start giving yourself grace. 
So then I can move through each of the dimensions. This th this time I might be spiritual. The next second something happens at work, so now I got to deal with cash flow. Then the next second I have my kids, so I got to deal with my social aspect and my roles socially with other people. Give yourself grace, second by second, and the hours will create themselves. Anybody else? Question. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Um. So you kind of so I'm. I'm wondering, like, how you personally got to, like, such a good mental, spiritual, emotional state. I know you mentioned, like, something that was holding you back was the whole apology thing. Um, and you did stuff to, you mm -hmm. know, help with that. Is there any other things that really, like, pushed you to, like, move forward with those things? Absolutely. Therapy. And I know, you know, earlier she was talking about the other things that we can do. And I, I definitely 100% agree with that. But I will say therapy saved my life. I did EMDR. Um, and to be able to go back to who I was as a child and tell that little girl that none of this was my fault, that changed something for me. And even recently, I could be down and out but because I have my spiritual connection because I have been making time for what pours into my cup it didn't destroy me when it could have um I am constantly in self-reflection like after this like I'm gonna put up here feedback tell me what I did right what I did wrong because I'm constantly like okay how can I become the best version of myself and then I also realize I only have control over certain things. I only focus on what I have control over in that moment. All the other stuff does not matter. And I'm genuinely a happy person. I'm always going to look for the silver lining in something. So it was therapy. It was my relationship, my spirituality. And it was a choice. Some people don't like when I say this because they feel like it's victim shaming, but I said I was a victim too. I had to choose whether or not I wanted to be a victim or a victor. And it was that choice that kept me going. Like literally, I was back in therapy for the last two years. I just graduated a month ago. So what you see in me, I am today. I tell people when you meet me tomorrow, I'm not going to be the same Malara you met today. So it's, it's being able to give yourself that grace to become 1% better than who you were yesterday. So EMDR helped, therapy helped, dancing, I'm a dancer. Better be glad I ain't got no DJ because I would cut a rug, okay? Um, but finding those things, making memories with my children, um, literally what I do keeps me alive. When everything happened two weeks ago, me going to my classroom and being able to teach my students, being able to talk to my therapy clients, being able to do supervision with my supervisees, that kept my heartbeat going. So I will also say the path that I've gone over for cash flow is a lifesaver every day because it reminds me of my life purpose. Hopefully that answers your question. You're welcome. Anybody else? I'm looking at time. I want to make sure I don't go over. Okay. All right. So last piece of this, one last activity, I promise you, is going to be the last activity of today. I simply want everybody to kind of stand up for me. And for those of you who are watching virtually, I want to say thank you guys. I really appreciate you all for being a part. This will be one of those activities that I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to either do it or not, okay? Because it does involve giving others hugs. I do understand that the panorama, what we call it, is uh, here but not here. Um, but I want you guys to literally space out in the room. And when I say stop, you're going to give that person a fist bump, a hug, a pound, something. Um, and we're going to do that for about two minutes or so, just so that we can have that interaction of people pouring into our cups, OK? So you're just going to walk around. That means you got to kind of move your body. I know 
We in this space. Uh, be mindful of the camera back there. Uh, but I want you guys to walk around. And when I say stop, however you want to greet that person, you can. And I normally have music, but I don't have no music. All right, you can stop. Or you can just hug, just hug somebody, pound somebody. How about that? Pound, hug, fist pound, whatever. <laughs> thank you guys so, so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're so